Hi guys, welcome to Planning for FCE and Kai Writing. Now this is incredibly important. I've mentioned in a previous video that those who plan generally pass, and that is certainly the case in my experience. But first of all, we need to define what good planning is and what good planning is not. Okay. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you uh, is a couple of examples here of what good planning is not. So, taking a look at uh, the very basic diagram I've put up here, uh, this represents what a lot of people do when they're planning their writing. They spend approximately 20 minutes writing, for example, an essay on a piece of paper. They then spend five minutes looking at it, and then they copy it to a second piece of paper and submit that as their final uh, piece of writing. And when I say they copy it, they copy it in its entirety plus all the mistakes that they've made in the first part. And they do this because... Uh, I really have no idea why they do it, actually. Um, because it's not a productive use of time. You're actually writing two bits of writing in the space of time for one. So it absolutely makes zero sense to me um, as to why people do that. And when you do, a lot of the time people run out of time because they're still trying to copy their uh, first essay to the second one. And it makes absolutely no sense. So tip one for planning. Do not simply write an essay and then copy it to a second piece of paper. It's not a productive use of time. Equally, you'll see here, uh, a lot of people, when I push them to plan, they think they will satisfy um, that need by writing, for example, in paragraph one, I'm gonna put an introduction. In paragraph two, positives. Paragraph three, negatives. Paragraph four, conclusion. Again, this is not a plan. This is a list, a very general list that will not help you when you're writing. All right. So just to quickly summarize, do not copy from one page to the other. It's a waste of time. And do not put one word descriptions underneath paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, and try to give me that as a plan. It's not gonna help anyone. Don't do it. Okay, so we've got that finished with. Now we can look at the positive things and what you should do in order to plan for these exams. Now, imagine that my whiteboard is a piece of A4 paper, because you'll generally have a piece of paper to practice with before you write uh, your essay or whatever. And you can see I've divided it into four parts, okay? Now, the hypothetical question that I'm answering here is, uh, write a review of a restaurant that you've been to recently, okay? This could be one of the questions in your exam, um, or it could not, but I'm just showing you basically how to do the planning, all right? First thing you want to do is have a brainstorm. Think about the things, the vocabulary that you're going to need to use. Because look, when you're writing, that vocabulary will come in and it will go out. This will happen in your native language and even more in a second language. So when you have vocabulary come into your head before you're writing or during the actual exam, uh, when you're writing your, your piece, make notes of vocabulary as they come into your head, okay? For example, here in the restaurant, delicious, tasty, disgusting, um, to describe the food. Uh, rude, friendly for the staff. Lively for the atmosphere, okay? So just make a note of those things because they will enter and they will leave very quickly when you're thinking about writing, okay? The next thing is the paragraph plan, not the one I was telling you about before, okay? You need more detail, but you only need to include the key points. And then as you're writing, you can go back and tick what you've done. For example, you'll see I've written here in paragraph one, restaurant, obviously. 
Where is it? Okay. Uh, why were you going? You can invent that. I like. They're not going to hire a private detective and uh, try to discover if you really went for that reason. So invent if you if you don't have any inspiration. And initial expectations, for example. So those three things should be included in the introduction. Tick them, eliminate them as you go. I've done the second paragraph as well. Your initial impressions of the place. Uh, were you seated quickly by the, the waiter or waitress? And the decor, was it modern? Was it contemporary? Was it old fashioned? Again, when these thoughts come into your head, put it into your vocabulary. It will help you a lot. The third point you need to consider is grammar. Okay, impossible for you to put all the grammar that you've studied in your course into one piece of writing or two pieces of writing. However, you can choose the ones that you uh, are more comfortable with, the ones that you are more confident using, and make a note of them to make sure that you include them in the writing. When you're writing, sometimes you just start and you finish, boom, hand it in. And you haven't thought, oh, I could use passive, I could use uh, a third conditional here. So a big part of planning is to tick and eliminate grammar points. When you put a passive sentence, eliminate it. You've done it. You put a third conditional, eliminate it. Okay. So this way you're building and you're including more and more advanced or intermediate structures to impress your examiner. The final part is the mark scheme. This is the criteria that they use to mark uh, the writings. Okay, uh, I've done another video which explained these, but very briefly, you've got content. So always think to yourself as you're writing your, your piece, is it relevant? Am I answering the question? If you do this and you refer back to your plan and ask yourself this question all the time, you are less likely to be distracted and to write things which are not relevant. So always refer to your plan. Communicative achievement. This is very important. Have you communicated clearly? Is it intelligible, the piece of writing that you are doing? Are you using the correct register? So formal, neutral, informal. Think very carefully when you're writing this because it's very easy to make mistakes. Organization. So paragraphs. Make sure to use paragraphs. It's so easy to get points in this just by using paragraphs or subheadings in reports and things. Really important to do that. Make sure your argument or your piece is structured in a logical sequence. So don't, for example, with a restaurant, don't write about the dessert and then go back and write about the, the main course. It makes no sense. Give it a logical sequence. You can do that by using a good paragraph plan, as we've done here. And finally is language. That's why I've included the grammar and the vocabulary. So in order to include relevant uh, higher level language, you might need to make a note of it on your plan. That way you can refer back to it when you need it. And you don't spend time sitting going, oh, what is, what do I need to think about? What's that word? Write it down. And that way you'll avoid frustration and getting lost later on. It's really, really very important. So this is a basic plan. And I don't think it's overly difficult to do this in the 10 or 15 minutes uh, before you start writing your principal part. Um, actually, if you have a good plan, writing the, the review, for example, will actually be much easier. You'll write it much faster because you have your ideas sequenced and you have a clear structure about what you want to do. Uh, so hopefully by following this advice, uh, either for teachers teaching the planning or students applying this, um, everyone can achieve a better mark with their Cambridge exam writing. Thank you very much for tuning in. Any questions or problems, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks a lot.